Right on, we've got a 2020 Royal Enfield Himalayan. This is my first foray into adventure riding. It's a bit exciting. Put my sunnies on. Alrighty. Just getting the hang. Just getting the hang. All right, one Royal Enfield Himalayan. So for a while now I've been toying with the idea of getting on a, doing a bit more off-road stuff. And I've watched a lot of reviews on the Royal Enfield Himalayan. And uh, I've been very impressed with what I've seen. But of course I'm yet to ride one until today, so. I'm here at Bryson's in Newcastle. I'm gonna tell you what, being a short ass doesn't help. My legs are stretched out, but that's all right. So first things first, let's take a look at the, uh, what they call the ergonomics. And uh, it's a very upright positioned motorcycle. Quite a comfortable seat actually. Thank you. Just takes a bit of getting used to. So we've got a little windscreen here at the front, which I don't know what I really think of it. This bike comes in at around about 180 kilos. I would imagine that's with a full tank of fuel, but I'm not sure. So of course, as some of you might know, I'm coming off riding a Harley Davidson, which is about twice the weight of this thing and um, and probably about you know I don't know 100 mil closer to the ground so I definitely feel a lot higher up than I would do riding my Harley but of course this is a totally different animal uh, the this bike boasts 200 mil I think it is of travel in the suspension at the front and 180 mil of travel at the back. Brakes seem good. Definitely noticing being higher up guys. I'm like on my tippy toes, it's hilarious. I'm so used to flat foot and Harleys. At least this bike's pretty light. And I know that when I'm traveling over dirt I'm gonna need I'm gonna need that travel. But I definitely wouldn't want to be any higher, that's for sure. Come on, let me go. 
And up in the pegs. Yep. Seen a lot of YouTubers just talking about the pegs. Um, making note of the fact that they're rubber. And you can apparently take that rubber piece off the top. So if you're traveling through mud and whatnot, uh, make it less slippery. Definitely noticing a difference with these tires over the road slicks that I would normally have on my Harley. Um, how you going, Mario? How are you? Come on, lights. <coughs> so the instrumentation cluster is very plain and very uh, minimal, which is cool. You've got your analog speedo. Um, you've got your taco. What else you got? You've got your fuel gauge. And you've got a little nifty little compass. Not sure uh, what sort of value I'd place on the compass. So in, in, in just in practical terms, I mean, in just in, in riding this motorcycle, it feels nice to ride. Um, I'm noticing the wind a little bit more than I would, I think, on my Harley. Um, that's just got to be due to the weight of the bike. Um, but, you know, uh, in terms of comfort on this bike, I'm, I'm actually quite liking it. Um, and it's an upright position, so it feels good. I'm not leaning too heavily on the handlebars. It's actually, it's actually, it feels quite nice, it feels quite comfortable. Just getting up on the pegs. Of course, you know, this is just purely a test ride, guys, so I can't really take it out in dirt or anything like that. This is me just getting a feel for the bike and what it feels like to ride. The front brakes are quite nice. Um, of This is, of course, the 2020 model and I've heard um, some negativity in relation to the brakes on the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Now, whether that's the 2020 model that they're mainly referring to or whether it's previous models, but I'm finding the front brake quite good. I mean, not going overly fast, but um, I am finding the front brake, you know, quite nice. It's doing what I want it to do, so that's okay. If anything, the clutch feels a little bit heavy. Yeah, I'm not sure what this windscreen would do. It's quite small, really, so it's probably best just for flicking away stone chips and um, bits of crap that come up from the road when you're on the dirt, I would say. But I think, you know, out on the main road doing 70, 80, 90 k's an hour, I don't think it's going to do much. I don't think that's actually what it's designed for. I think it's designed mainly to block stone chips and whatnot, I would imagine. So it's taken me a few goes to find the friction point on this bike. Comes of course standard with a bash plate and then a tank guard I've noticed as well. And for, you know, for seven and a half thousand Australian dollars on road, I mean, uh, as a as an experiment into the world of adventure bike riding, if you absolutely hate it and you sold it for five grand or six grand after a year, well, let's say you kept it for 12 months and you lost a thousand dollars, you know, like, I mean, you're not in for heaps of money. Whereas, um, you know, your BMWs and your KDMs and all that sort of jazz, like you're talking a lot more money, so. Just got a bit of pick up and go. It's got a bit of torque. I mean, I'm out here on the main road with all the big boys. And uh, only good over here, actually. Yeah, so the one thing I'm going to have to get used to is the stretch in the legs being a lot higher up 
than, than normal but that's okay I'll get used to that so yeah I'm definitely thinking of getting into the adventure bike world and you know I'm not into the crazy you know um, supermoto or moto you know um, you know enduro enduro style riding or anything like that I just want to go for a bit of a nice ramble on the dirt I'm on lights Now yeah, well, I'm doing 70, feels good Don't know what the speed limit is through here Yeah, like I said guys, I'm just going to take it nice and easy Just get used to the bike And um, see how it goes Oops, got the indicator still on. So I've got to say this bike's really comfortable. I guess I'm not going to be able to say how this bike performs on the dirt because I'm not going to be going on dirt obviously. But I can tell you that on the road it feels good. I'm, I'm cruising along and it feels good. I don't know what it would be like out in the highway. I think it would be a bit... I think after a while I don't think it would be great, but... Alright, I'm going to head back this way. Feels a bit wobbly in the bends, with the, uh, with the knobblier sort of tyres. Apparently they're not, they're neither good on the road or good on the dirt, they're sort of a bit how you go on. But, um, I think they're all right. All right, so let's just gloss over a few points before I take this bike back. This is the 2020 Royal Enfield Himalayan, fuel injected. I was going to spit out all the info that I know about it. We've got 200mm travel of a suspension in the front and 180 in the back, I believe. And uh, this bike is roughly 7,500 on road, which is an incredibly cheap price. Um, it's got a very comfortable seat. I keep forgetting to turn the indicator off. I also love the look of this bike as well. It's got a very retro styling. I love the colour of this tank, the sort of red and black colour with the grey stripe. Looks really cool. Explore the world of adventure riding and look cool at the same time. I think that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? This is quite a basic motorcycle, but very functional. It's kind of um, doing all you needed to do without any frills. Definitely a no frills bike. It's just got all you need. You know, it's got the plane, the suspension, it's got the comfortable seat. If anything, it could probably do with a bit more power, I suppose, but... But when you're on the dirt, you know, unless you're... I mean, if you're going to be hooking on the dirt, I don't think this is the bike for you. If you want to have a nice gentlemanly, like, ramble on the back roads, and, and the dirt roads and the, you know, look, I mean, the rough terrain, any kind of rough terrain is going to be good. But it's not a, it's certainly not a performance motorcycle. And, I, you know, I think anybody who's after a performance motorcycle isn't going to be test riding a Royal Enfield anyway, so. Ah, bloody indicator. That just about wraps it up guys, the 2020 Royal Enfield Himalayan. Will I or won't I buy this motorcycle? I'm strongly thinking about it, I can tell you. Anybody who's watching this video, 
I'd love to know if uh, look at this guy. Love to know what your thoughts are on it. Give me your pros and cons on this bike and tell me whether or not I should buy one. Okay guys, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.